welcome to my channel. My name is Cassidy and this is Briella. She's three months old today, so we're going to be sharing her birth story with you in honor of her three months. So to go from the beginning, I got pregnant at 18 years old and when I got pregnant, I wanted to give birth at a birthing center because I had saw the movie The Business of Being Born, which is a great documentary. I recommend it to anybody who is pregnant or attempting an actual birth. It's an amazing documentary, really inspiring. Fast forward to when I was 40 weeks pregnant, I had appointments at this point weekly, and I went and she checked me for dilation, and I was zero centimeters dilated but fully effaced. And I knew that meant nothing because I could be dilated at five centimeters for another week, or I could be zero at that appointment and go into labor that night. So. I knew all of that, but it was still getting to me a little bit um, because I knew that giving birth at a birth center, you have to give birth between 37 weeks and 42 weeks. So I was really holding on that she would come in time, but a whole week went on, no baby, no signs of baby, but I was doing every induction method in the book except for castor oil. I did not try that one, um, but I did everything else. and. Come my 41 week appointment, I had to go in to her office at the birthing center for a non-stress test. And before my appointment, my fiance Alex and I were driving around and I was having contractions and I was looking at the clock on the car and they were coming about seven minutes apart. So we were getting really, really excited. We thought that she was coming today. We went to the birth center and we told her what was happening, but by this point I started to die off. So I don't know, but she told us that Usually you'll lose your mucus plug and then two days after that is when you'll have the baby go into labor whatever So I hadn't lost my mucus plug yet. That was one thing <laughs> that I was really on the lookout for so she hooked me up to the monitor and She told me after the test that I had two contractions on the monitor But that the baby had moved one less time I think than she was supposed to to pass the test so I had to go to the hospital and that took forever. I was there for three hours. The tests were all fine. They did an ultrasound. Everything was perfect. Um, they sent me home, but they were trying to pressure me to do an induction at that point because I was over 40 weeks. I said that if I really wanted to hold out for my, for the birth center. So if I didn't go in the labor by 42 weeks, then I'd be back. But yeah, so I went home that night Contractions completely stopped. I was thinking nothing of it at this point. I was like, well, another night, no baby. So then I woke up at 5 a.m. that morning to contractions and I was having them like five minutes apart, but they weren't that intense. But because they weren't intense, I wanted to practice for when they got more intense. So I, can, I immediately started all my breathing techniques, everything that I had prepared for when the day would come. And I went and I grabbed my phone and I grabbed some headphones and I just laid in bed listening to a pain meditation. I tried to get some sleep because I really wanted to get sleep. I didn't know how long I'd be in labor and I just wanted to be rested in case this was the real deal finally. But it felt real, like this felt different to me. I just felt like I knew, but I didn't wake anybody up. I didn't wake Alex up. I just kept to myself because I didn't want to like alarm anybody. They weren't strong enough yet to go to the birth center. So I did that. I couldn't sleep because they were five minutes apart. So I'm like, well, if I can't sleep, I might as well get up and try to escalate things. So I got up and I decided to go to the bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom and I checked and I had started to lose my mucus plug. I lost a little bit, TMI, but it's a first story. <laughs> So I lost some of it and I got really excited because at this point I was like, okay, this is like the real deal. I'm losing, I'm losing that. That's the one sign that they all told me to look out for. So that happened and I got really excited. So I, like I said, I went to walk around. I wanted to bounce on my ball, but I realized when I was doing that, the contractions were like slowing down and they weren't intense. So I went back to go lay down and they were more intense. So I said, okay, I'm laying down because like I said, I wanted things to escalate and get more intense. So I laid down and they were getting really intense. So I had to start breathing through all the contractions and I knew that they were gonna get more intense. So I wanted to, like I said, prepare my body. So I started right from the beginning 
with all the techniques that I had learned. I was breathing and I laid there for a while and I was able to actually doze off in between contractions for about five minutes. I was able to sleep and I did that I think for about two hours, two or three hours. I went out after that I finally was like, okay, like I'm awake, like I'm awake for the day. I went out about like 8.30 to go tell my mom she was sleeping on the couch. I told her that I had lost some of the plug and that I was having contractions and she was getting really, really excited. So Alex's mom and grandma came down and my mom told all of them what was happening and everyone was getting really excited. And after that, my mom and Alex's mom, we all just hung out together we made breakfast and we ended up just sitting on the couch basically all day long practically. Um, and it was really, really nice. It was really relaxing. So then about lunchtime, they went to go get me some of my favorite foods. They got me a Velveeta uh, raspberry zingers and they got, I think, fruit punch. Yeah, they got all of that and that was my labor lunch. We sat down at the table, we ate and we decided to start painting nails. So my mom's not very good at any of that kind of stuff. So I painted her nails while I was having contractions. And during all my contractions, I would just stop and I'd breathe and close my eyes. And then I'd continue on with her nails. Um, that was really fun. We then, after lunch, we just went back to the couch. We just hung out there all day. Um, once it started to get dark outside, they dimmed the lights down and my mom started playing like some relaxing music and we were just talking and relaxing at this point they were actually starting to die down a little bit they were like between seven and nine minutes apart but I was still having them consistently all day so I just figured like okay well I might just go a whole nother day of contractions a whole nother night but I, that was kind of worrying me because I was like I'm not gonna be able to sleep through these if I go through the night so I was really getting worried that I'd be too tired um, but I just continued to relax, breathe through my contractions. Every time I'd have a contraction throughout the whole day, like I said, I would just put my head down, close my eyes, and just breathe through it. Um, then around, I think we had a late dinner. It was like 8 or, like 8.30, I think. And Alex's grandma made everyone spaghetti. His brother was there, um, my mom, his grandma, his mom, Alex, we were all there. And we were... We were eating dinner and throughout the entire dinner, like I said, have a contraction, I put my head down. And then after dinner, I decided that I wanted to go in the room and kind of just like turn the lights down, play some music, bounce on my ball, relax. And Alex and his brother went to go play basketball. So that gave me an opportunity to just kind of chill by myself and try and get things going. So once they left, I did that. I went to the room, just relaxed by myself and Things were starting to get a little bit more intense. They, I mean, the whole time, I don't want to say that they were painful, but I mean, they were, it was pain, but it wasn't anything that I couldn't handle. So I was just breathing through it all. And, but something told me that it was probably going to happen that night. And I was kind of getting bored. So I decided to do my makeup. I did my makeup in between contractions in the dark. I had like a light up mirror. And I completely had all the lights off and I was doing my makeup in the dark. In between contractions, I would basically throw my makeup down and just <laughs> start breathing through it. I got um, some really comfy pajamas on and I was just getting ready for labor. So when Alex came home, I told him that things were picking up again and they were getting more intense. And um, he decided to call my midwife because his grandma came in and she asked to look at my app and asked me how I was doing. And... My contractions, I think at this point, they were like three minutes apart, but they weren't super, super intense. So Alex's grandma said to call the midwife. So Alex called her. I talked to her and she said, you know, you seem fine. Seems like everything is like going well, but you know, if things do pick up, I'm here. Or if you want to come in now, I can check you now if you would feel more comfortable. She said, but if you were ready to go into labor, like your contractions would be really intense. You wouldn't be able to talk. You would not be able to jump right back into a conversation. So I believed her and I figured that's everything that I've heard from everybody. So I, I didn't think that it was time to go just yet. Just because the intensity wasn't there. But um, 
I think right after I got off the phone, about not even like five minutes later, I went to go lay down because like I said, it was more intense lying down. As soon as I laid down, I had a really, really intense contraction. And I was like, okay, like maybe this is, this is the intensity that they're talking about. And then I asked, I got up and I asked Alex to come with me to the bathroom because I didn't, I don't know, I just didn't want to be in there alone if I got another one in case I fell or something. So I went, he took me in there. As soon as I got in the bathroom, it was like right outside of our door. I had another contraction. Like this wasn't even a minute later. I had another contraction and he was timing them for me. I forgot to mention that I had my, I had downloaded the app early in the morning and he was timing them and these were like a minute and 30 seconds long and they were these last two were only a minute apart not even a minute so he's like oh my gosh like i'm calling the midwife now and he called her and told her what happened and she's like okay like i'll meet you guys there um he helped me out to the car we got in the car we started driving the birthing center was 30 minutes away so i don't even know how many contractions i had in the car i had a lot but Every time I would have them, I was like gripping the seeds, gripping the top, and I was just, I was really vocal through them at this point. I just had a ton in the car, the whole 30 minutes. But the whole time I was not thinking about an epidural, I don't know why my brain was just very focused on what was happening in the moment. And I was not, I was not, I wasn't even thinking about the hospital, pain medication, I just needed to get to the birth center right then and there. Well, we walk in and she's like, okay, like go to the back room. I'll check you. She checks me. It was taking her quite a while to check me. So once she was like trying to figure out how far along I was, she looked up and she said, okay, like usually I'm not stumped, but right now, if I'm not mistaken, I think I need to go fill up the tub right now. She immediately got up, went to go fill the tub up. And apparently in this time, I don't, I think, I'm a, I think I had another contraction, I did not know. She told Alex that I was eight centimeters dilated and I had no idea that I was that far along. It didn't even occur to me to ask for some reason, I don't know, but as soon as she went to go start filling up the tub, I told her I felt like I was really nauseous, so she gave me a bag to throw up in if I had to and I immediately started to throw up. And I must have, I think I was in transition. I think at that point she knew that she was right about how far along I was. So she continued to fill up the tub. Alex and I were just talking. We were getting really excited. We knew that she was on her way. So we were getting really, really excited. And once the tub was filled up, I went and I got in and I immediately, like at this point, felt like I had to start pushing. She told me if I felt like I needed to push, that I could push, just do my thing, and she'd be right there. So she was in the room. I was pushing. The backup midwife had not come yet, so she was on her way. I had I wasn't even I wasn't thinking about anything, but I totally forgot that they even had to have a backup midwife. I just continued to push, and I was trying all sorts of different positions. To me, the pushing contractions weren't painful and I know that sounds weird but it was just so not as much of painful as it was like an intense urge to get her out I just continued to push and then next thing I knew there was another midwife walking in and I remember I think I was I had just finished a contraction I like looked over to her and I smiled at her and I was like hi and then I immediately went into another contraction shortly after she came in I was really really feeling like she was coming down pretty quickly so they my main midwife she was checking my heart rate and the backup midwife had a doppler and she was checking her heart rate throughout the whole time and she was just like traveling down my stomach i remember at one point the backup midwife had said um that she was getting the baby's heart rate at 130 and my main midwife said i think you're getting maternal heart rate and for whatever reason, to me, that meant that they couldn't find her heart rate and that really, really freaked me out. So I started pushing like crazy, way too fast, way too hard, but she came really, really, really quick. I, I think I pushed for like 30 minutes, maybe. And when she came out, she immediately came out and they put her on my chest and I was holding her in the water and it was 
it was such a crazy experience. Like when you have your first child, you really just, you can't prepare for what that's going to be like, what that's going to feel like. It was so surreal. So once they put her on my chest, I was just staring at her, but she wasn't crying, but they weren't, they didn't seem concerned about it. Um, they were patting her, rubbing her back, and I started to do it too because I wanted her to cry. I wanted to make sure she was okay. Um, she ended up crying. She let out a cry, but she had a lot of, um, what is it? I mean, I forget what it's called. It's, I don't think it's mucus. I don't remember what, you know, I don't know what it was called. But um, they said because she came out so fast that she wasn't, she didn't release all of the liquid or something. I don't, I don't remember. But because of that, they had to like suction out um, some liquid out of her nose and her mouth. But she, they never took her away from me. She was just on my chest. And it was such a beautiful moment. Alex and I were just staring at her. So in love. I held her there for a while. Um, we did delayed cord clamping. So she was, I don't know how long she was on me. But once the cord stopped pulsating, they asked Alex if he wanted to cut it. And they helped him. He cut it. And we just laid there basically until the water started to get cold. And once the water started to get cold, they asked if um, I wanted to push the placenta out. And I said, okay, sure. They wrapped her up and they gave her to her dad. And um, I started to push the placenta out. And that was actually really, really easy. I don't know why, but that was actually my only fear throughout the whole process because I had heard some really scary stories of pushing the placenta out so I was really nervous for it but it came right out it was super easy very fast and they helped me get out of the tub I was still in the tub they both grabbed my arms helped me get up and brought me to the bed and they laid like a bunch of those like pee pads down <laughs> because there was a lot of blood obviously I mean you just gave birth so there was a lot a lot of blood um, I laid there for a long time um, with her and they immediately asked me if I wanted to breastfeed. She was just so cute and peaceful and we were so happy. After a while of holding her, they wanted me to try and pee. Uh, so my mom and Alex's grandma had actually come at this point and Alex took her out to go see them and hold her a little bit. And then this time I had to try and pee and I could not pee. It was really, really difficult. It just, I had no, I couldn't pee. So they told me if I couldn't pee that they were going to have to put a catheter in, but that they would let me try again a little bit later. Uh, they just gave me a ton of water and I relaxed some more. And at this point they said that they were going to like look down and see what it looked like down there. So they checked me and I had... I tore and I tore up the front which is a really rare tear my mom tore that way I tore that way um, and my midwife said that she tore that way but she said it's really really rare most people don't tear that way and that was the only part out of my entire labor entire delivery that was brutal so because I tore up the front they couldn't numb me well it would only numb in like certain places but towards the top the front it would not know and that was oh that, that was so excruciating <laughs> but she was they had the baby on me and while they were stitching me and at also to the side they had the other midwife the backup midwife taking what was it she was giving her a vitamin k shot took her footprints she weighed her she weighed eight pounds two ounces she was 21 inches long and i forgot to mention too she was born at 2 14 a.m so she came in the morning and at this point, so labor started at 5 a.m. and then I had her at 2.14. But I would say from the moment that contractions got really, really intense to the time that I had given birth, that whole time was like two hours, two and a half hours. So in my head, it was a pretty quick labor because before that, it was pretty much a piece of cake. Like I was painting nails, doing makeup, like, eating fine all day long so that was all really simple easy the only time I got intense was like I said from about like 12 a.m. and then I had her at 2 14 so that was pretty quick and honestly it wasn't bad and like I said once the contractions got really really intense it wasn't so much about pain anymore as it was like I was just in my own head and 
once it came time to push it was just an intense urge to get her out so throughout this whole process the only thing that was considered painful very painful was my stitches that that hurt really 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 bad other than that though I had a really really amazing really peaceful birth labor I couldn't be more thankful at how it all went I plan on doing a video on how to prep for a natural birth and I plan on doing a ton of videos on my channel about motherhood natural living all kinds of different things so if you're interested in that just subscribe and I'm gonna be posting videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday so keep in tune for that but, um, yeah that was our birth story it was amazing amazing birth I don't want anyone to be scared of birth because it was really honestly one of the best experiences of my life and I can't wait to do it again but right now I'm just enjoying her she is the sweetest little girl ever so yeah we're just enjoying the time right now but yeah if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and hope you have a great rest of your day, and we will see you later. Thank you. Bye.